Tak się dobrze panom rozmawiało i Wojciechowi Szczęsnemu, i Peterowi Szmajchelowi, że stwierdziliśmy, że nie możemy zmarnować tego materiału, bo tam jest mnóstwo merytorycznej treści. A więc jeszcze raz, Wojciech Szczęsny i Peter Szmajchel. I to była taka rozmowa, że my mogliśmy wcielić się w naszą ulubioną rolę, czyli rolę paprotki. When I speak at events and stuff, it, people for some reason they're very interested in penalties, and I say, well, penalties in a game, I mean that's that's really a lottery, really big lottery, and it's not really what I do, you know. If they score a penalty in a game, there's not not much I can do about it. Penalty shootouts, it's different from a penalty in a game, and I've you know not really a lot I I, I can be in charge of. Not I can't decide anything. I don't know. Who, who's going to take the penalties or in whatever order they're taking the penalties, what they, their feelings as a human being in that given moment is. Are they nervous? And I just decided I, I don't care. I want to I wanna be in charge of something. And the only thing I can be in charge of, in charge of is what I do. So I always decided, even before I knew who was going to take the penalties, anyway, George, i decided what I would do on the five pens. I picked my side because then I felt I was in charge. You know? Casper's the same, doesn't like to know. But then I'm working with Rob Green. We do, uh, actually, we did the, uh, the Europa League final in Gdansk. So, so in between the game, the game finishing and the penalty shoot, I also I tell this, that, that's how I feel. And he said, oh, I'm the exact. I couldn't get enough information. And for me, that would just confuse me a little bit. And, put too much importance into the players taking the penalty. So that was the one thing I did. I stayed in control. At least I believe that. And I think that's important. We need to do our job. We need to focus on what we can do. And and that sometimes you can you can be too instructive for what you have to do in a game of football. I'm going to agree with you on almost everything you said. But <laughs> I go fucking crazy with penalties. <laughs> do you? Yeah, we, we do like for information. Good, yeah, we do like good 40 minutes of penalty analysis before every game. And it's not just to get as much information as I want to my, as I can to my head, but it's just to when somebody's about to take the penalty, I need to have the conviction, even if I don't know what he's doing, I need to have the co- conviction that I know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Look, if I go the right way and I I know where he's going, I'm going to save that penalty. Mm-hmm. And If I'm not prepared, I'm going, uh, nah, right, let, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Right. I, I like, I like to, to have the conviction of, okay, I've studied him. I know what he's doing. The penalty's under pressure. He usually shoots like this. He's going to my right. I'm going. And then if, if he shoots the other way, he shoots the other way. It's not a problem. Okay. The only downside of it, we usually do it with the goal, goalkeeping coach and all of the goalkeepers. If we, we usually come to a conclusion together more or less then it's your decision on the pitch but we come to a conclusion all uh, all together and it's happened to me i think two times in the last three years at juventus where i felt on the pitch nah nah i have i have the opposite feeling of what we discussed but you go with the analysis and then you consider goal and you just go fuck it (laughs) so that's when it disturbs you that's when maybe too much analysis mm, doesn't help But, but I, I need it. I need it for my peace of mind. I've, I've prepared. I know I'm going to save it. But, with the but I think that's also a really big difference to, to the times that, they, that you, you're playing, you and Casper are playing in now, to the, to the time when I played. Because we didn't have, we didn't have all, all the things that you have now technically. Available. Possibilities, yeah. I, I never go, it was better or it's worse. I never go like that. I always say, I wanted it this way. I'm sure... I'm sure if I had everything available that you have now, I would still be the same. I wanted yeah. to be in control. You know, you, get, you play, play for Man United, you, you play, I played, uh, I think I played four European Championships, World Cup as well. You play against the best players in the world. You have to believe that you are one of them. That means you cannot put too much importance into who you play. If you start to think about, we, we had a spell a couple of years where we, we always drew against Juventus, by the way, and Zidane was playing. If you, if you start thinking about your playing against Zidane, oh, one year we played against uh, Inter, you know, with Simeone, Ronaldo, Joe Karev, uh, Pirlo. I mean, if you start thinking about we're playing against these guys, then you've already lost. Then you have to believe that you are you're playing them because you are up there at the same level. 
and they then have to beat you. They, I have to somehow get into their heads. And I always felt that one of the best ways of getting into Stryker's heads was to completely ignore them, just ignore their existence, just look through them, not even acknowledge when they were there, just, you know. And sometimes I was successful. Other times I don't think they care. But at least for me it worked. Okay, so question ab about yesterday, Wojtek, yeah, uh, about uh, this penalty. I had an impression that you were waiting until the end to choose the direction. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I actually believe it or not, I actually fucked up on that penalty. Oh, I, did you? I really fucked up because I wanted to make the movement to the right, right, come back to the middle and go to the right because I, I knew he was watching. But I made my first movement to the right way too early and he slowed down and I, and I, I got lost mm -hmm. because I, I knew he was watching me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stay in the middle as long as I can to, to disturb him. And then... In the end, I was late for the ball. There was no, there was no way I was saving it. I went the right way, but I was late. But thankfully, he he missed, so I got a little bit lucky. Maybe maybe he missed because I didn't move. Maybe I don't know, but but I I, I made my move. You always a little bit you always early. have to tell yourself that what you did was the thing that that made the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When they miss the penalty, I I treat the missed penalty like a safe penalty. I do not fucking care. I if guess somebody misses the penalty, I've saved it. I don't care. I, I guess if Peter Schmeichel knows your history in big tournaments... <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think he knows the extremes of it. <laughs> you, know, you know Peter? I know. Yeah. I, was, I, I didn't want to say that, but I was in the stadium <laughs> in the opening match in Warsaw. Oh, I felt yeah, really sorry for you there. And then the rule of the red card from the penalty kick changed the year after that. Thank you very much. Yeah. They should have changed it the year before. But it's ridiculous. That was always ridiculous, but uh, yeah, you know, exactly. always just because we're talking about, it, I'm trying to find the penalty. Here he is. So I just want to be absolutely sure. Yeah, yeah. That what you're saying, I'm, I've got it here. <laughs> I'm not lying. And, to and you, okay. you know what? What's interesting? <laughs> so, so he he is probably the best striker in Europe in the last two months. He should be so full of confidence. And yet, when you look at him before he takes the penalty, he's all over the place. I don't know why he takes it. I can see that now. Yeah, I get you. There are good players who can, who can watch the goal right until the end. But I don't think you should be doing high-pressure penalties that way. Because if you do that and the goal doesn't move, you start shitting yourself. It's easy to do it against, uh, against Elche in, uh, in, in, the, in La Liga when you're winning 4-0. But when you have to do it at 1-1 one -one and, and you need to win the game, I hope they're going to watch me because I'm just going to go, okay, I'll, I'll stand still yeah. and you make the decision. I'm not making the decision for you. Mm -hmm. I, I think in that, in that high-pressure situation, you need to be like Ronaldo. Choose the side. Shoot the penalty. Yeah, strong. and just hammer it. I don't know how far back your memory goes, but uh, we beat Holland in the semi-final of 1992 Euros and we end up in a penalty shootout. But our last penalty, the best penalty I've ever seen taken, ever. Obviously, because of the importance of it. Who did but it? It's a guy called Kim, it's Kim Christoph. He takes the fifth penalty for us against Hans van Broeklin. And Hans van Broeklin and the previous four one, four penalty, has been out there, you know, you know, talking to the players. And, 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 and I have to be honest, he should have saved three of them. He had, I mean, they were so bad, but they, yet they won him. So he spent so much energy. So, so this guy, Kim, he's been watching him. So he goes on the... Puts the ball on the spot, and then he, he steps back like six or seven steps back, and and he goes to the referee like this, you know, and he, he walks up to the ball, and and the referee goes angry. What? And the the ball is not on the spot. It's it's clearly on the spot. And handsome boy, the head comes out a little bit. He doesn't know, what, you know, and he replaces the ball, and the goalkeeper goes back in, and Kim takes two steps backwards. And just rolls it to to Brighton's right oh. side. It's not even. It's not even in the corner. This is the fifth penalty. He scores. We're in the European Championship final. Mm. And I mean, for someone to have the nerve and be cool as that, it's fantastic. For me, very similar thinking process. But for me, the best penalty I've ever seen was Pirlo against England in the penalty shootout. I think it was 2012. Italy missed the second penalty. England scored all of them. Piero takes, I think, the fourth penalty of the team. And Joe Hart was screaming. You know Joe. 
he's yeah. he's a character and yeah. he's screaming and he's making those faces like ah yeah. and he just and he just goes I'm I need to pipe him down and he just gives him the the cheekiest panel but not even like a it was it, it barely <laughs> left the floor it was just yeah. so soft <laughs> and you could see just the piece of Joe Hart dying inside <laughs> and and and, <laughs> and yeah. he had, and they, they end up winning they I think Gigi saved the fifth penalty of Ashley Cole I yeah. think it was and um and they end up going through and just it's funny how one moment like this can can change the the whole yeah, yeah. The whole energy of the shootout is incredible there's also um andreas Bremen in the world cup final uh, 1990 they win 1-0 on, a pe- on penalties uh, on a penalty yep and he's left back left left foot and left back and he takes a penalty in a work, world cup final with his right foot <laughs> slowly rolls it in by by one of the posts and being asked afterwards, I mean, whatever possessed you to shoot a penalty with your right foot when you're left footed. And he says, well, my left foot is for power. My right foot is for accuracy. <laughs> one, one now. <laughs> for example, you were looking for some trash talk before the penalty kick? No, no, I never did that. Never. The most important thing for me was that they were, that they were thinking about me, that, you know, they were hating me. I didn't even try to do anything. I just played so... I just tried to be, be so arrogant as I possibly could, mm-hmm. you know, and, and basically just project that, you know what, if, you, if you're going to score here, you're going to shoot your best penalty. I just acted like this was the most noble thing in the world for me. This was my bread and butter. This is happening all the time. And of course, all of that is just an act. You know, it's just an act, but it was not an act. Because I know you play at this level. You, it's very, very difficult to get into the head of people but it really was an act to get me believing that I was in their head and that I was on top of the world because when when you cut completely into the bone a penalty shootout is for the goalkeeper a massive lottery if you're up against 11 penalties as a Villarreal they they create they they, they hit of that quality you have got you can choose the right side every time you will never save the penalty So it is a lottery. You need to be, you need to be crossing the guy at the right time with the right timing at the right height, of course the right side. But so many things need to be right at the very, very same moment. And you know the odds are not very good. And because you don't have any decision in the penalty, you are not choosing the angle. You're not choosing the side. That how 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 long his run up is. The referee blows the whistle. That means you can start, but you're not choosing the starting point. That's him as well. He's in control of everything. All you can do is think, or at least that's my thing. All I could do was think that at least, you know, I've made one decision here. And if it doesn't go right, well, at least I tried, you know. And if it goes right, I'm then, I am then the man because I had, I had it all worked out by instinct. And that, that, that kind of built it up to me. Because that's a different of generation speaking again. Uh, is it? Yeah. yeah is. No, I'm not saying you're old. <laughs> you are a little bit, but you did. Uh, you did say, but uh, no, I take the, no insult. <laughs> in the last few years, especially like last five years, about seven out of ten penalty takers watch the goalkeeper. That that wasn't the case before. Even when I started playing, that wasn't the case. So before they usually chose the side, you choose the side. 50-50, let's see how it goes. Mm. Nowadays, I feel the, we have more control of what they're doing because you can make mm. a movement, you can stand still, you can, you can sort of invite them to, 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 to shoot to one <clears> side. <throat> before, before it wasn't like that. Uh, I, I sometimes speak to, to Cristiano because Cristiano is an old-fashioned penalty taker. He, he, he never watches a goal play in his life. He just chooses a side and, and shoots. And sometimes I'll try to wait for a striker and... and, and maybe go the right side, but a little bit late because I was trying to stay on my feet as long as I can. Wouldn't save the penalty. He goes, I think you can save that. And I was like, look, Christian, not everybody shoots like you. Like, if, if I go against you, <laughs> I choose one side, I go there. Like, I did that against him in the 94th minute of the quarterfinal Champions League. And I, I went so early, I went high into my left and he should even higher into my left and go yeah. into the top corner. Fair enough, you go, know, well done. Nowadays, I, I think we have more control because... You see that the run-up is much slower, so you, you see exactly when they put the, the, the when they plant their foot. 
You see exactly yeah. at that point they have to choose what they're doing. And at that time you can you can do a little movement to, to invite them to shoot to one side or the other. The best feeling is when you when you've done something and they think, ah, oh, he's gone to his left, and then they shoot the shit penalty to your right, and you just you just go and save mm-hmm. it. And you feel like you yeah. feel on top of the world because you've made and made that make that decision. And and that's I, I love that. Uh, it actually is a very good point that I, I have never have never viewed it. Uh, in that light, and, and you are completely right. And it just reminds me, if that's the last thing I'm going to say in this, so I go back in time, that's how old I am now. Back then, we didn't have the Intercontinental Cup, but we played the European champs against the South American champions. And it so happened to be Argentina. And we went to Argentina to play this game. Uh, and Diego Maradona was playing. And now, I mean, I say I try to not notice who I'm playing against, but that guy is the best player ever, 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 ever. And of course, you're kind of, kind of proud that you're playing against Diego Maradona. And you keep an extra eye on him. You have to say that. Uh, and we had somebody marking him completely out of the game, uh, apart from one situation. And then, of course, he created a chance uh, and they scored. And the game ended 1-1 and we ended in the penalty shootout. And, and just to go against everything I've ever done in penalties, or just said to you, with him, I knew that he was looking at me. And, and I knew, and I'm thinking, I'm going to be smarter than Maradona. You know? I'm going to stay on my feet, and I'm going to wait for him to put the ball. Because once, once he looks up, and he doesn't see me go anywhere, you know, I will have time to react, because he can't put it you know, in top corner. So I'm waiting, he's running up, and I'm waiting, and I'm, I'm waiting, and I'm still waiting, 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 and I make the slightest movement, you know? And as soon as I do that, and it's not something I do consciously, it's like an instinct, I just make a little movement, and it's not more than that. He picks his side, and I'm not lying. I recover to come back, I think, and I react to where it puts the ball, but he puts it that far away from my right foot, and I had no chance, <laughs> and I'm killing myself. It's, it's the best player ever, you know? And it would have been very, very nice just to have him, you know, save the penalty for him. So watch your heart. Uh, well, that was a time when I saved the penalty from Barazano, you know? <laughs> Not to happen. I still have time to save Messi's penalty, so I'll let you know if I do that. <laughs> I wish you all the best, so you never know. I will keep an eye out for it. Okay, Peter, so in the end, you have to say, which keeper is better, Kasper Schmeichel or Wojciech Szczęsny? <laughs> that will never happen. <laughs> well done. Good answer. Mm-hmm. He cannot be objective. He's the father of well, one. Actually, I'm But I don't think you can Kasper. say... I don't think you can say who's, who's the best goalkeeper. Because I see the goalkeeper as part of a team. How does a team play and what type of goalkeeper do they need? Can he do that job that the team needs? Then he's a really good goalkeeper. But he can be the best goalkeeper in the world. And then, for instance, people, people judge goalkeeping on saving. Yes. And it's so far from how you have to judge a goalkeeper. If he's the best saver in the world, you play in a team that never can see any chances and what you need your goalkeepers to do is to pass the ball your feet and he can't do that. I mean, come on. You can't. No. World-class goalkeeper. Playing for your ventures, playing for Poland. You know, dominant figure in, I don't know, well football for how long now? Ten years at least, if it's not more, you know? Yeah, a little bit more. Casper's <laughs> yeah. the same, you know, for his country, for his club. Uh, not, not a club on Juventus level or Arsenal's level, but still a club that's won FA Cup and the Premier League. But to compare Leicester with Juventus, can you do that? No, you can't really do that. That's my favorite. But anyway, you've got world-class goalkeeper. And so do we. Great. Okay. Thank you, Peter, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you. And thank you for this. Bye, bye, bye. bye, bye. bye.